Amen. Amen. Let me tell y'all something. I don't care where I go. Ain't nothing like Messiah Community Church. Nowhere on earth. Uh, um, my kindergarten teacher, Miss Hall, taught us, Jesus loves the little children, all the red and yellow, they are. Jesus loves the little children of the world. Now, when she taught us this in school, by the way, she taught us in kindergarten, right before she put us down for nap time because she was sick and tired of us. But, <laughs> but in school, she was teaching us great theology and the theology of God's love for the nations for ethnic groups. Are you following what I'm saying to you? We have a, a, an effort underfoot where governments around America are trying to undo the story, trying to erase our history in this nation as black folk. Now, what I'm teaching today is for black folks, is for white folks, is for people of Latino uh, heritage, um, people of Asian heritage, but I want to focus on black folks because that's mostly who we are. Are y'all tracking with me? But there are governments that are trying to erase our impact on history in America. And so they don't want black history taught in the schools. Y'all like, where is that? We live in Baltimore. Re watch the news. Understand what's going on. The Bible says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. God was not just making a generic statement. He was talking about groups of people that he created for his own glory. Am I making sense here? He's talking about specific groups of people when he says he loves the world. It includes every tribe, every tongue every nation, every ethnicity, every, uh, every, every group that spins out of the, the, racial, um, uh, the racial dynamic that God has created. What I'm trying to help us see is that people are not haphazardly created by God, and God cares about color, God cares about race, God cares about ethnicity, am I preaching to just me? I want to posit today um, that black history is Bible history. It, it is not just American history, but it is biblical history. Ask your neighbor, have you read your Bible good lately? Okay, some of y'all are going to just get blown away. Uh, if, if I don't teach this, a bunch of people are going to be running around wondering, am I cursed? Because they said uh, Ham was cursed in the Bible. But in fact, Genesis, uh, uh, Moses didn't say that Ham was cursed. The text says that Canaan or Canaan was cursed. He was a son, a descendant of Ham. So we who are also descendants of Ham are not cursed people. People treat us sometimes like we got a curse. But I'm so blessed. Y'all not going to help me preach. I done went away and got real hood on y'all. If I come back and act the hood, y'all just say, Lord, just work with him. But I'm, I'm, I'm black and blessed. Come on and help me preach. I, if, it, if it had not been for the God who made me and saved me, you understand what I'm saying? We, people, people are running around getting lost. In, is, and, and we worked with students on this for years when I was in college ministry, that the Christianity is a white man's religion. Nothing could be farther from the truth. We didn't, we didn't discover God on these shores. We knew God on those shores. And if, if, if God had not been on our side when we came through the, the Middle Passage, there's no way we would have survived. And we're still surviving. And we're still thriving. And we're still expanding. And we're still growing. And y'all not, is anybody getting what I'm saying? It was God on our side. We didn't discover God on these shores. Um, silly stuff like, um, yeah, let me, let me get on. 
So I'm trying to hold my mule a little bit. Um, because racism keeps spitting vile venom in this land. And y'all know it's finna heat up with this election year. It's, it's finna heat up in this election year. And I've decided I ain't running. I ain't, I ain't, I'm just, we're we going to stand still. And listen, if it wasn't for black folks in America, America might not have lasted. We built the nation. We built the nation free labor. You understand what I'm saying? We, we built many of the hospitals and many of the educational institutions. If you go back in your Bible, you can see this in a moment. We were the first to build societies in the world. Y'all about, about to get all of me today. All right, let me give you this first, first principle. The first principle here is race, color, and ethnicity matter to God. Race, color, and ethnicity matter to God. A lot of times when I teach on this stuff, I, I invariably will have somebody chime in, Pastor, why you got to be teaching on this? Can't we all just get along? Yes, we can all get along. But I don't have to, I don't have to skip over what my Bible says about who I am. And, and I'm not raising up a, a, a banner of black superiority. I'm raising up a banner of black awareness of the God who calls us because if I can't explain to my children and to my children's children what God says about us, we miss the opportunity to, to bring them to Jesus. And I'm not fitting to let my children or my children's children suffer outside of relationship with God, what God has written of us in his word. Am I making sense here? Come, come with me to um, Genesis chapter... Uh, 9, verse 19. Let's go here for a moment. Genesis chapter 9, verse 19. They should have that. These were the three sons of Noah. Y'all remember Noah? Noah, Noah? Noah was a descendant of, um, uh, of, of Lamech, who was a descendant of Enoch, who was descended from Methuselah. Y'all know, as you say, old as Methuselah. Well, actually, Methuselah, I don't think, was the oldest. I think Adam was the oldest. But Methuselah lived a long time. And, and so uh, the world was going crazy, and God needed someone that he could use when he was ready to destroy the world because he said that the, the inclinations of man's heart, man's heart was only sin always. And so he destroyed the earth with the flood, but he spared a guy by the name of Noah. Now, interesting piece of history here is that Noah who was born of Lamech. Let's see if I can say this right for you. It's probably the first white looking person in humanity. When Adam was created, he was created from the dust. I'm sorry, I've never seen dust. Are y'all tracking with me? I'm, I'm not trying to be funny. I'm not trying to, to, to be demeaning to anyone. I'm just trying to give you truth that most of us are not exposed to. Adam was created from the dust, which means his descendants would have looked darker than Eurocentric people. When uh, the book of Enoch, which is an extra biblical source, you don't have to believe it, you can just look at it yourself, um, says that when, uh, when Lamech saw this baby born to him, he said, Lord, have mercy. He was blown away. He had never seen anything like uh, It turns out um, some people believe that Noah would have been albino. So Noah gets in the ark. He and his family, his sons, their, their, their family, and he has three sons. They are Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Y'all know this, this, this Bible? All right. Uh, these were the three sons of Noah. From, from them came the people who were scattered where? Over the whole earth. Go with me to verse 20. Noah, uh, actually go back to uh, verse 18. I'm sorry, verse 18. Verse 18. 
18, two verses back. 9, 18. Is our machine stuck? Give me a good old-fashioned. The sons of Noah, there we go, who came out of the ark were Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Ham was the father of Canaan. Let me talk to you about this. These three represent um, the progenitors of the human race when God began to repopulate the earth. Shem would father the Semitic people. You know who Semitic people are? Um, Ham would, would, would father people of uh, African descent. Japheth would father people uh, who were of Euro, Euro, European descent, largely. So I'm going to give you all of their tribes and names. You'll catch this in a minute, but here's what I want you to get. Um, I can't tell you how many people have said to me, I don't see color when I see you. I said, cuz. What do you see? Right? We, we, we're, we're in this sort of milieu where people are trying not to um, deal with a very tough issue. And so they say things well-meaningly, I don't see color when I see people. But I'm like, you can't not see color because God made us people of color. Are you following what I'm saying? He's given us our color. He's given us our ethnicities. He's given us our racial identities. If everybody were the same color, loving people who are ethnically and racially different from us would be easy. But y'all know like I do. Lord, it's getting hot in here. <laughs> Y'all know it can be challenging, am I right? To, to love people who are different than we are. And it is challenging for them to love people who are different than they are. But God calls us, listen now, to love our neighbors as ourselves. Pastor Bryant said it so well last week, we got to learn how to love ourselves. But, but loving me doesn't mean I don't have, that I don't love you, even though you're different from me. And so ignoring these biblical foundations, it has fueled a lot of racial ignorance in our land. And unfortunately, uh, the church, back in the early days of America, supported the notion of racism and racial ignorance. Am I making sense here? It was not the black church. The black church became a haven and a safe place for black folk. I'm, I'm thankful for uh, the little white church on the corner of 28th and Omahundra where prayer and praise prevailed because it was smack in the hood. We caught a bus from one housing project to another part of the hood just so I could learn, I could discover God in a way that helped me understand him. So, the first principle, y'all get the first principle, race, color, and ethnicity matter to God. That's why the text in Acts uh, chapter 17 reminds us that God has placed people on the globe where he chose. He chose to place people on the continent of Africa. He chose to place people um, uh, in, in the area of Palestine and Syria and the Middle East. He chose to place people on the European uh, continent. Are y'all following what I'm saying? This is not haphazard with God is what I'm trying to get you to see. Um, here's the next principle. The black race is firmly rooted in scripture. We just read in Genesis 19. Uh, let me tell you um, who came from Shem, who came from Japheth, who came from Ham. So from Shem came uh, Mesopotamia, Babylonia, Assyria, Syria, uh, Eastern Afghanistan, Yemen, uh, Samaria that we know in the New Testament, Southern Arabia, Jordan, uh, which has the Moabites. When you read your Bible and you see the term Moabites, you think Jordan, on the other side of the Jordan River. The Hebrews or Israelis and the people of Lebanon. So, so 26 nations came from Shem. Uh, 14 nations came from Japheth. Russians, Slavic people, 
the Medes and the Persians, who you read about in Acts chapter 2 on the day of Pentecost. Uh, the Greeks, the Romans, the French, the Spanish, the Italian, uh, the Portuguese, Germans, uh, and other European races, Anglo-Saxon races, the English people came from Japheth. Is this an education? Okay, is this helpful to y'all? I was scared to teach this, but I felt the Lord saying, no, teach this. I want you to, want you to get this. From Ham came 30 nations, the Phoenicians, the Jebusites. And you read in your Bible sometimes the Jebusites. Y'all see all these ites? Yeah. Right, you're like, who is this? Who is this? Uh, the Jebusites populated a town or a city known as Jebus. When you read in the book of um, um, Judges, you'll see that, uh, that there's a story right, right around uh, chapter 19 uh, where, where this, this guy and his concubine are going to go through a town called Jebus. Jebus, which was the Jebusites, became, <laughs> which were a canonical people, Canaan, were descendants of Ham, which means that Jebus was populated with people who look more like you and me. When David ascended the throne to Israel, he ascended the throne and Hebron to begin his reign. He later moved the Ark of the Covenant to Jebus, which he renamed Jerusalem. Hmm. So when you see some of these places, or when you see the Canaanites were in the land, put a color on it. So Ham was the progenitor of the Phoenicians, the Jebusites, the Hittites, the Amorites, the Girgashites, the Hivites. Um, he populated, uh, he, he, he was the father to um, uh, Cush, uh, Mizraim put Libya. Y'all seen, seen that in your Bible? In Genesis chapter 10 in the Table of Nations, you'll see these names. Uh, that would be Egypt. Cush is Ethiopia. Cush simply means black. Egypt, Ethiopia, Libya, and what was the other one that I said? Um, Y'all know what I'm talking about. So Ham is the progenitor of the black race. Okay, I, I want to show y'all something because I was tripping when I was in I was in Jerusalem one day, a few years, couple, maybe three, four years back or so. I was really tripping. I was bugging. We went up to a place um, called the um, Church of the, the the Church of the Holy Sepulchre, where people from all around the world come to pay homage. To Jesus, many people believe that this was his burial site. Some people argue that it was in another place, but this has become a venerated place where people come and pay homage to Jesus, uh, believing that he died in this space. I walked up to the church of the Holy Sepulchre, and I see this brother right here putting his hands on two other brothers. Keep Go, go one more. Go another picture. Keep going. Just flip through. I walked in, I see a brother over there. Brother had some beads in his hand and was reading his Bible on his iPhone. I said, wait a minute, this is the church of the Holy Sepulcher. This is, this is a place worshiping Jesus. These people are from Ethiopia. What they doing up in here, up in here? Keep going. I walk further, I see a lady sitting in the corner. I saw several people sitting in the corner, head coverings, reading their Bibles, praying through the scriptures. They're just praying, praying silently, praying, praying quietly, read, reading the scriptures. Keep going. Two other ladies sitting over in the corner. I have my camera out. Y'all know me. I'm like, I'm like, good God, what? Lord, this is a peculiar sight. Keep going. One more, go one more picture. Two more, I think. Well, that's, I'm not at the Holy Sepulchre, that's me. That's me. But y'all catch, catch the idea here? 
These were folks who traveled from Ethiopia and, and, and some of their priests lived near the temp Temple of the Holy Sepulchre because they are not the, listen, they didn't discover Jesus in America. They discovered Jesus in Ethiopia. Tell somebody, it's a big family. It's a big family. It's a big family. It's a big family. Listen, they discovered Jesus in Ethiopia and came to pay homage. What, now, how did the gospel get to Ethiopia? Okay, let me just jump forward in my notes. Because there was a man who had come to Jerusalem to worship, and as he's leaving town, he was, he was an Ethiopian eunuch who, who was a part of the Kandachi. In other words, he was a high official in Candace's, uh, uh, um, you know, order, the Kandachi, right? She was a woman who was in leadership. He came seeking Jesus, but Philip, the, the evangelist, said, do you understand what you're reading? He said, yeah, you know, it's... Help a brother out. Yeah. Yeah. Philip jumps up on the man's wagon and, and breaks down the book of Isaiah to him. The man don't turn around and go back to Jerusalem. He goes home to Ethiopia because he's a eunuch from and begins to spread the gospel. Okay, let me take y'all a little bit higher. Y'all know that guy in the Bible, um, Mark? Mark looked like us because Mark is from Northern Africa. Oh, you better, listen, when you read your Bible, you better put some color on it. Let me, let me take y'all a little bit further. I, I, they winding me down. They're like, uh, can I give y'all a couple more pieces of this? Here's what I'm trying to get you to see. False religions thrive on ignorance of race, ethnicity, and color in Scripture. And that's why there's a religion flourishing in America called white supremacy. White nationalism. Because, because a lot of white churches won't teach this truth. And I'm friends with a lot of white leaders. And we're having this conversation. Are you following what I'm saying? I'm not hating. I'm trying to correct some bad theology. Because if I'm going to live and serve God, I want to do it biblically. You follow what I'm saying? Um, we are not the lost tribe of Israel. The tribe that was lost, was, was lo Benjamin was a tribe that was lost because of a woman who, who was slaughtered and dispensed to the 12 tribes after she had been brutally raped by some Benjamites. And then the rest of the nation of Israel came against the Benjamites and wiped them out. Y'all know what's happening in Gaza right now? Right, where they're trying to annihilate all of Gaza. That's how the Jewish people got down when they saw threats to them. To them. I'm not saying it's all right. I'm just saying it's not new. Let, let me give you a few uh, resources here. In search of, you want to get these resources. A book called In Search of Blacks in the Bible, Dr. William Dwight McKissick. Um, Blacks in the Bible by James Harden. Ethiopia and the Origin of Civilization by John Jackson. Noah's Three Sons. I'm going too fast. You can't write this all down. We'll put this in, we'll put this, uh, in some notes uh, on our website. Um, black history is biblical history. Can I just go real fast with y'all? I'm, I'm going to point out some black folks in the Bible going to blow your absolute dome. <laughs> Let's start in Genesis um, with, we talked about Ham. Um, so his descendants are Cush, Ham, I mean, Cush, Mizram, Put, and Canaan, the Canaanites, who we see a lot in the Old Testament. But we come to a guy by the name of Nimrod in Genesis chapter 8. And, and look at this, look what it said about Nimrod in chapter 10. I'm sorry, chapter 10, verses 8 through 12. Um, it says, Cush was the father of Nimrod, who became a mighty warrior on the earth. That's a, that's a huge moniker. He was a mighty hunter before the Lord. That is why it is said, like Nimrod, a mighty hunter before the Lord. The first centers of his kingdom, the first centers, 
not the first center, the first centers of his kingdom were Babylon, Uruk, Echad, and Kalne, and Shinar. From that land, he went to Assyria where he built Nineveh. And where did Jonah try to keep from going? Jonah said, like, I ain't going to Nineveh messing with no black people. It wasn't just that the people had become brutal in war, but it was also, I believe that Jonah was a little bit racist. Because God don't hide the truth of the story. And God still uses us despite our jacked up -itness. Come on, help me preach, somebody. God kept it in the story. But Nimrod, Nimrod was the first builder of societies in the world. And he was a black man. Now, he tripped out because y'all know sometimes when we build big stuff, we get big heads. And then he built the Tower of Babel in the next chapter. And God said, no, 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 cuz. No, you done gone too far now. Let me break this down. Y'all follow what I'm saying? All right, so Nimrod, uh, the tribe of Ephraim. If you ever read about the tribe of Ephraim, Joseph married an Egyptian woman. Y'all remember when Joseph ended up in Egypt? Joseph was Semitic. He married a woman uh, from Egypt who was of Canaanite descent, which means you got a Jewish man married a black woman. Mixed marriages ain't nothing new. In fact, it was more normal than we like to think. He marries this, Jew, this Egyptian woman who is of Canaanite, Canaanite descent because she's of Hamitic descent and he's of Semitic descent. And, the, and, and his father, Jacob, blessed his sons, Ephraim and Manasseh, who become the, the final tribe of Israel. They're kind of co-tribes and they inherit the land with the rest of the tribes. Y'all not going to help me preach up in here. I know my Bible. I feel the anointing right now. Here's what I'm trying to tell you, is that these two tribes are, are, um, are African-centric. Um, by the way, Joshua, the son of Nun, who was Moses' aide, is a descendant of Ephraim. Y'all didn't even know. Y'all didn't even know Joshua, who fought the battle at Jericho and the walls came tumbling down, was a brother I feel a spirit. <laughs> Joshua is a descendant of Ephraim. Can, let me give you all some more. Caleb <laughs> is a Kenite who is of Hamitic descent, which means that Joshua and Caleb, the only two spies who came back with a good report, we can surely do this. We can surely go up and take the land. When Moses sent out the 12 spies, 10 of them came. Well, I oh, don't know. They, like, they look like giants, and we look like grand. They said, nah, cuz, nah. Uh-uh. We can surely do this. They came back with a good report. Here go two men of African descent. My God, I wish I could get men to know how strong you are in the Lord. When God is on our side, we can fight any battle, any demon, any devil. We can win the victory if we will believe God. And, the, and, and listen, there's some people who don't want black men to know how strong you are if you will lock down with God. If you will give God everything, the battles we could fight and win, we could win our children, we could win our communities, we could win this nation if we would just stand still and see the salvation of our God. Oh my God, you got, listen, you got history on your side. Joshua and Caleb. Caleb said, I want my land, but bro, I'm 85 years old. I'm as strong now as I was the day you sent me into the promised land. He said, I'm going to go and fight for mine. Is there any brothers in the house who will declare I will fight for mine? I will stand strong for mine. I'm going to fight for my family. I'm going to fight for my inheritance. 
I'm going to fight for my grandchildren. I'm going to fight for the generations of God. God is on my side. I am going to fight. Give me my land. Give me my territory. Give me my inheritance. If you don't fight for it, ain't nobody going to give it to you. Can I give you all a couple more? I'm going to get out of here. Jethro had a daughter named Zipporah. Moses married her. She was a sister. And that's why Miriam and Aaron got mad at Moses. Does Moses, does God only speak through Moses? And the Bible goes on to say they, they were against him because of his, uh, <laughs> His, his, basically his Cushite wife. They were against him because his wife was black. Okay, let me give you out the last one. I'm going to sit down and shut up. Um, y'all remember a sister by the name of Bathsheba? Bathsheba. Um, <laughs> daughter of Sheva. Sheva is a Hamitic people, which means baby girl was up on a rooftop. <laughs> I know why David. I just, I just, I'm like, bro, I'm not even mad at you no more. <laughs> now, here, here's the rest of the truth of this. Y'all come on up. The rest of the truth to this is uh, David, Solomon have black women in their lineage. Okay, let me, let me take it all the way in. When you read your Bible and you read the lineage of, um, that Luke writes, uh, the genealogy that Luke writes, Luke writes a gene genealogy that traces Jesus back to Adam to show his Adamic beginnings. That's why Paul says he is the second Adam. Remember, all of the peoples descend from Adam through Noah, through his three, which, which indicates that Jesus would have blood from all of those lines. He was not blonde haired. That's cool. Ain't nothing wrong, you know. If you got black hair, blonde hair, brown eyes, blue eyes, God, God loves us. Are, are you following what I'm saying? But we got to get this narrative right. So, Jesus, who's in the line of David, in, in Matthew's genealogy, five women are mentioned. Now, he's Jewish because of Mary, because your mama makes you Jewish. But he got four other sisters in his lineage that Matthew doesn't skip over. Most genealogies don't include the women. Matthew said, um, Let's not forget Tamar, who was um, hooked up, snuck up with Judah, her, her father-in-law, after her husband died. Y'all don't remember this story in the Bible? Okay. Uh, so, so Tamar is in the line of Jesus' birth descent. Tamar is Hamitic. Okay, give two, three more. Uh, Y'all remember a lady by the name of Rahab, the harlot. When Joshua, who was black, comes fighting the battle of Jericho, he says, listen, y'all better get out. Uh, Rahab says, listen, listen, we believe in your God. She, they say, okay, hide the spies, and listen, if you, if you don't give us up, when we come back, we won't destroy you. Rahab is the mother of a guy named Boaz. Not broke ass. <laughs> not not poe ass. 
Boaz, who now marries a woman named Ruth, who is a Moabite from Jordan, who is also of Hamitic descent. Oh, I'm going to give it to you straight now. I might as well. Are y'all catching this? Um, and then there's a woman, we talked about Bathsheba, right? Uh, who is now the mother of Solomon. And that's why the Bible says of Solomon that he had beautiful brown skin and thick, dark, wavy black hair. Now, you say, Pastor, what is the point here? If Jesus has Japhetic, Shemitic, and Hamitic blood running through his veins, he got the whole world in his hands. When he hung on the cross and said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do, he had the whole world in his hands. He's got the you and me brother and it, listen, he had black folk in his hands. He had white folks in his hands. He had uh, 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 Asian folks in his hands. He had brown folk, black folk. When he died, he died. Listen, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever should believe in him shall not perish but have eternal life. Here's what I want you to know as, 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 as black folks. You've been in this story and you've been on his heart. He's been loving us boldly for all of human history. We did not just come along and we are not an afterthought to God and we are not the, the, the uh, wow God, we are not the tail. We are the head in the sight of God. We are not cursed. We are the blessed people of God. I wish somebody would go out of here today and declare I'm blessed and God loves me. I'm in the story of God. God has been thinking about me from the beginning, from Genesis all the way to Revelation. And that's why the Bible can say in Revelation that every tribe and every tongue and every ethnos. Come on, stand with me.